Okay. Five again. Was, I don't know what happened. Hello and welcome to another episode of Break Up to Wake Up. I'm so excited to be filming another episode. And before we get started, I want to reiterate the purpose of this show. It is not to like bash our exes or talk crap it is really to i mean you can do a little bit of that but it's mainly to to express ourselves and to reflect on these experiences how they shaped us and affected us and to build community around an experience that feels really isolating when you're going through it so let me introduce my guest today rod or (laughs) rodney yes is that correct okay uh, oh, and what are your your pronoun your pronouns? She, her. She, her. Okay, thank yeah. you. That's and a first for that. <laughs> what? That's a first for that. Oh, well, <laughs> true. I try. I try. It. <laughs> um, Rod is a community leader, a poet, and a nonprofit leader. Um, anything anything else you'd like to add to your resume? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's pretty much sums it up. Um, inspirational speaker. You know, I definitely try to do things for the community writer so yeah that's right i like i like how you put that right there i'm just trying to be the best version of myself out here that's what i'm doing (laughs) thank you (laughs) okay um also before we get started i want to say all these questions are optional your participation is is you know optional so if there's anything that you don't want to answer don't feel comfortable saying that's like totally fine you can just say so Mm -hmm. i want this to be you know reflective and expressive not triggering you know got it got it got it Got it. I'll give you the Nicki Minaj. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Too too much. Okay. (laughs) And um, also, uh, I'm assuming that we're gonna kind of talk about one main relationship in particular today. Mm -hmm. So, for your comfort, if you would prefer that, like, whenever you say this person's name, if you're gonna say their name, Mm -hmm. I can bleep it out, or you can use a nickname, or you can just not say a name. Okay. Whatever you're comfortable. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, so let's now we can get started. Oh, okay. That's all the, out the way. All right. Okay. Hmm. So if I was to ask you what was the most um, like devastating or like impactful, like heartbreaking mm-hmm. breakup you've experienced, does one like jump out at you? Yes, uh, definitely my longest relationship. It was like five years. Uh, <laughs> half a decade. Yeah, half a decade for sure. Uh, if you asked me a long time ago, devastating. If you ask me now, impactful. Very okay. much impactful, yeah. but Good yeah, <laughs> that was about five years yeah. ago. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, and uh, in my my experience, my kind of like my big ex, my like mm-hmm. big breakup that I had, um, I hadn't really dated anyone else before her. Like I was in the closet all through high school, and this was the first person I dated in college. Oh. So when we broke up, I felt like. It made it so much worse because I was like, I don't know anything else but you. Like, what do I do? Now? You know, because I had right. had any. I had never even like. She was like my first everything. Okay. So I felt like that made everything a lot worse when we broke up. Um, so in your experience, what was your kind of dating history like before you met this person? Um, to be honest, I had dated a lot. I had dated, you know. Well, I really didn't start dating women until I was like eighteen. College, 17, because that's when I got into college. 17, 18, yeah. And I, you know, met this woman when I was like 21, 22. So okay. I had dated a, a couple women before then. Mm-hmm. They weren't good relationships at all. Okay, yeah. <laughs> when you're young. You know, <laughs> you're just, you're just horrible, 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 horrible. Made some poor decisions in college. <laughs> poor decisions. <laughs> okay, and um, how would you kind of describe where you were at in life? When you started this relationship like were you still in school were you still in your hometown were you like a stable adult yet or... okay 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 um so during that time i'm gonna say i was still in college i was in georgia at the time so i was still in college um i was going to school i was doing like youtube and things oh, of that nature yeah i was like real heavy in youtube when back when like i don't know if you know this person but like Flip on deck and studology and all of them. When that, oh, I know, I know studology. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, when that was going on, yeah. I was on YouTube during that time <laughs> okay. as well. Yeah. So uh, in that era. <laughs> yes. So during that, I was just very much comfortable with myself. I had just really gotten comfortable with who I was and how I dressed and coming into my own and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. So it was around that time that I was 
I would say I was an adult because I was living on my own in college. So, yeah, yeah okay, pretty yeah. much. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, and so how did you meet this person? <laughs> Downy Link. Downy what? Downy Link. Downy Link. OG lesbians, dollar beans would know. <laughs> but oh, um, this is before my time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's very, very old. But like, it used to be like a website for like the lesbians, gay, queer, queer, you know, all the other alphabet oh. letters. And you could go on there and like, there would be like little, you could put people on a dock and watch them via video and you can have people oh. like two and three people at a time watching them at the bottom. And then there's like a whole chat you could be in. It was oh, a wow. very, like, it was a dope little site. Yeah. Now what happened, wow. I don't know why it got shut down. You said I missed that. Yeah. Probably got replaced by like dating apps and Instagram and Tumblr. They have no... <laughs> Hey, anybody who knows Down the Lake, it has nothing on Down the Lake. How it was structured, wow. how it was set up, it was really, you know, it was a lot of catfish, but at the same yeah. time, you get catfish everywhere. Yeah. True. But um, I enjoyed it. Okay. Yeah. But that's oh. how we met. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so I remember you, you had told me prior that the relationship occurred in Miami. So when you met online, was, was she living in Miami? Mm-hmm. Gotcha. She was in Miami and I was in Georgia. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. What was your, what was your like first impression that like pulled you in and was like, ooh, I have an interest here? Like she was gorgeous. I think the day, yeah. Okay, big, yeah. big, big hair, beautiful skin. Yeah, she was just really gorgeous. I was like, oh, she's yeah. pretty. Yeah. And then that was that. Okay, yeah. Love at first sight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it probably was. You know what I'm not gonna say. I can't remember. <laughs> okay, and um kind of give a summary of how things went from meeting online, you don't live in the same state, to getting into the relationship. Um we met on Down Lake, we conversed a lot, we exchanged numbers. Um, during that whole time, it was just a lot of talking on the phone. You already know how it gets mm. when you first talk to somebody, you could talk to them yeah. all day. Yeah. Not anymore, <laughs> I don't really have that same sentiment sometimes to be on the phone all day. But mm-hmm. with that particular situation, we were talking all the time and then we had made an arrangement because I'm actually from Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, my hometown is in Jacksonville. My mom still you know, lives in Jacksonville. So uh, Orange Park for people who know Jacksonville for sure. Um, so we had made a plan where she got on the bus and came halfway between Jacksonville and Miami, which mm-hmm. is Melbourne. So I drove from Georgia all the way to Melbourne to pick her up back to Jacksonville, my hometown. So we spent the weekend in Jacksonville, with like our first link up. And then from that point on, like that night, we went out to a club together and it was kind of like, oh, you, that, was, that was it. This we was it. it. We together. <laughs> yeah. That's, I, I mean, I, we together. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, what were some things that you remember like really liking about her at the beginning? Um, at the beginning, I think I really just enjoyed her energy, her company. I want to—I wasn't using words energy back then, but now that I understand, it, I think mm-hmm. it was just the energy that we had when we were one with one another. The connection, yeah, and how she made me feel like she very much like appreciated me and very much made me feel like you know, oh, you look good, you look great. She was very good with words affirmation and things of that nature so it was just a good vibe just uplifting you yeah she, it was a good vibe yeah. like we we and we look very well together at the same time okay. so yeah okay um so early on did you see her as somebody that you were just really into or were you thinking like this could potentially be a long-term partner for me yeah i'm very much a, like a like com- like person who likes to be in a relationship so if i'm in it i'm in it i don't yeah. just date just to date yeah. even back then i wasn't just like oh, you know, I kind of like like you, let's hang out. Like, yeah, let's mm-hmm. hang out. But if I can't see anything, like if I didn't yeah. see like some type of connection, like some type of, I wasn't doing mm-hmm. it. So when we first got together, it was definitely like, okay, this is a vibe. Like, oh, this could work. Now, five years? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I was thinking that much far ahead, but yeah. at the same time, as time progressed, like we would have conversations and mm-hmm. it definitely got to that point. At the beginning, I was just like, oh, this could be a long relationship. Cause yeah. I, you know, my previous relationships were pretty long. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So I was like, okay. You know. Yeah see how this goes i feel like you can go somewhere yeah yeah okay and then at some point conversation was like jump hey move to florida <laughs> yeah yeah that's pretty much what it was you were like yeah <laughs> uh, yeah so it was like um we kept conversing we enjoyed each other so much like from that time that she came to jacksonville we had been talking for like maybe two or three months before that mm-hmm. or maybe i maybe exaggerating that time i'm not sure but you know in our world it seemed like two to three months yeah so i feel like it was two to three months <laughs> but um, <laughs> we've been talking for a while so by the time that things progressed and you know she was way out in miami and trying to she traveled to georgia a couple of times and we was like you know what 
at that time I was in an apartment and the lease was about to come up and they were like, do you want to stay or what y'all want to do? Da, 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 da. And I was like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and do this. So yeah. I went back home to my mom's house. She went back to Miami and it wasn't for her to like come live with me. It was just, okay, I'm gonna come closer so it'll mm-hmm. be easier to commute. Next thing you know, I when we were coming back from Georgia, I drove her all the way home and she didn't want to stay. Uh, yeah. So she ended up coming back to my mom's house with me and we mm-hmm. lived in my mom's for like a year or two. Right. Yeah. Two? No, a year? No, two years we lived in my mom's. Okay. Yeah. And then from that point, it was like, we kept having other conversations and I was very like, even though I was young, I, I was very much knew what I wanted in certain mm-hmm. things. Like I was, I want a child by 25. Like mm-hmm. just, I want a child by 25. We were having those conversations and so on and so forth. So lo and behold, we had a child together at 20, when I turned 25. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, and then at that point, once we had a little break in between that, because as time progressed, you know, you get with somebody and you're always up under them. Mm-hmm. And like you don't have you isolate yourself from your other friends and things yeah. of that nature. So especially was, when you like move exactly, but, like you have family there, but not like probably the same circle. Exactly. So her not having nobody around but me, we always hung out together. We always did everything together. There was never really no time apart for her to do her own thing. We're definitely different in personality wise, like getting along with people. And she's charismatic, but at the same time, like she's just very selective. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know. So I'm like was, that too. I'm like only <laughs> friendly with other queer black women besides that. I'm very dismissive. Yeah, right. So <laughs> it wasn't very like she wasn't like trying to go out and make yeah. friends or nothing like that. She was very like, oh, my friends are your friends. Your friends are my friends. That was it. So when it got that time where I was kind of like, all right, I want to do what I want to poke my head up. I want to do other things and so on and so forth. Have an individual identity. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. It, it seemed at that time we were both young. So to her, it seemed like. Oh, I didn't want to hang out with her. I was mm-hmm. just going to leave her at the house. I'm just going to do it. And I'm. it's like, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> you want to take the car? <laughs> like, yeah. what do you want to do? Because I, I just want to like, go. You can have your free time too. Yeah, like, that's what both I was it. It. Yeah. And it just wasn't working out like that. And then other things transpired. I, you know, cheated in regards to emotional connection with mm-hmm. other people. And she did whatever she did. I have no clue. I owned up to mine at the mm-hmm. end of the day. But she did whatever she did. And then we ended up splitting up for a little bit. And then... When bam, thank you, ma'am. She was pregnant. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. Gotcha. So, uh, and then after that, we ended up. I moved to from Jacksonville to Miami, mm-hmm. and was out there ever since. I just moved from Miami in November of last year to Georgia. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. What were some things that during the relationship you like bonded over, or like mm-hmm. made you closer? Because like sometimes it can be like. Like a hard time, like a death of a close one can kind of mm-hmm. bring people closer in a relationship or just like shared things that you both love to do, like traveling, like mm-hmm. some things like that that you feel like just solidified the bond that you had. Um, good question. Uh, or even the child. Do you feel like having the having the child did that? Yeah. No? <laughs> At that time, things were not good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but before that, what really like connected us is is... Our, I think at that time we were so young, we loved the fact that we were very much like fashion forward, very much like, oh, let's do a video, let's do this, let's do that, let's take yeah. pictures, let's, you know, if, if you looked online, we were the poster couple. Oh, okay. So prob- we bonded probably over. seen it. <laughs> <laughs> probably seen it on Tumblr. Yeah, <laughs> we, were, we were on that interracial, whatever, whatever, black love page. Listen, like, we were like that poster family that you would see. <laughs> so we enjoyed being that. And, and yeah. as we, you know, made that scene on outwardly in, in, you know, within the confidence of our relationship, we embodied that for a good little bit of time. Like we very much love the fact that we had a healthy at the beginning relationship. So that's pretty much what bonded us. Like, yeah. cause outside of that, we had very different, um, when I say we were, we were different, we had different interests. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I can see that how kind of, if everyone kind of tends to struggle dating, but mm-hmm. if you are like actually doing well, it's very right. like solidify. Right. <laughs> Um, okay, well, tell me, tell me more about things that you, like, loved about her. Um, I love the fact that she was very, you know, she had her way of expressing herself to the world. Like, I, like, when she walked in the room, like, people paid attention. Mm. Like, she very much was captivating. Her energy was always, like, very good. Um, she always made it a point to, like compliment me because I'm a words of affirmation type of person so I appreciated that a lot uh, I'm trying to think it's so 
long ago. You know, like I'm a compartmentalizer. Once, mm-hmm. So once I process and let it go, I process and let it go. Yeah. Uh, but more so just her being herself. Like mm-hmm. she was very much herself for the majority of the time, you know. Yeah. And I could appreciate that. She wasn't trying to be no one else. She wasn't, she didn't like me because I was, you know, somewhat big on YouTube or social. It wasn't none of that. Like, she just liked me for me and we were vibing. Yeah. And I appreciated that. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, Um. so I think as you explained it, she, so she got pregnant while y'all were on a break, mm-hmm. the correct? And then y'all were back together. Mm-hmm. And then family. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So... How that happened? I'm trying to word. Well, I'm trying to word the. Uh, I mean, that you know, I'm yeah. trying to word the question. Like, um, what? Like, did you like? <laughs> I'm trying to word this question. Um, what about her made you want to co-parent with her? Like, what made you feel confident? Like, I can co-parent with this person, and I can have family with this person. I think it was comfortability. It wasn't mm-hmm. anything else outside of that. Like mm-hmm. at the end of the day, we had a conversation about having a child. We conversated about how we conversed about how we wanted it to happen. And based on, you know, how everything went down, that's how I believed it mm-hmm. happened. So at that time I was like, you know, this is what I asked for. This is what I manifested. Yeah. But now looking back, be careful how you manifest and what you say, because you'll get exactly mm-hmm. what you want for. So be very detailed in your words. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, like, yeah. Once she told me it was no say, it was like no. Oh, I want a baby, and and if you're pregnant, this was that's just, our baby, right? And yeah. that's just what it was, and that's kind of how it went. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. Well, do you do you also feel like when things were kind of not going well, that then there being a child involved like complicated things because it's you're like creating a family with mm-hmm. someone that's different than ending a relationship. Mm-hmm. That's breaking up a family now. Mm-hmm. Like, um, yeah, it was a lot different. Um, things that I probably would have left a situation for in any other situation, I didn't because there was a you know my my daughter. You know, so yeah. every day I wanted to, out in my mind, in the back of my mind, I was like, I can't leave before my daughter knows me, just in case, because it's that thing with lesbian because you don't have. I didn't have any rights. My daughter mm-hmm. may have my last name for a little bit and so on and so forth, but like legally, I had no rights to my yeah. child. So being that as our relationship grew and we became more untrusting of one another and how the dynamics would change, I knew how she operated during that time. And I knew how she knew how I operated. So she knew how to play with strings and do certain things. So yeah, when when it came to the child being there, it made it a lot different in regards to how I reacted to certain things and how long I stayed in the situation and so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Were there like other things that kind of kept you wanting to hold on? Like I definitely, I remember when I was with um, my like big ex, like mm-hmm. I kind of had this mentality that like, I wasn't ever gonna have this with anyone else mm-hmm. because I was like so crazy about her. I was like, there's no way I'm gonna <laughs> feel this way again. So I feel like sometimes that made me like kind of want to hold on to things yeah. like longer too. So was there like any like other things like about her or about the relationship? you were just like this is special i can't let go of this it got to a point where i know i'm just gonna no. be quite honest because <laughs> no. even though there was things that i loved about this woman it wasn't because i was in at that time i didn't realize i'm not in love with you i'm mm. just literally like staying because yes i love you to death like i have so much love for you but i'm also staying in fear of this situation mm. and even though I'm staying and I'm like, oh, okay, I, I have so much love for you. I have love for who you were, who mm-hmm. I have pictured you in my mind and I've, yeah. you know, played you out to be this person. And that's on me. That's why I'm saying I played you out to be this mm-hmm. person that you're not, you know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, you're growing and evolving. And, you know, it's a lot of stuff that I'm understanding about pregnancy and all this. Stuff. So as you're cr- becoming this woman, like, I'm like, this is not, this is, this is not working. Yeah. This is not working, but I'm going to stay because I'm comfortable. And I, and, I, and I know we used to have this great love and I used to feel so comforted by you and I used to feel so just invoked and just, oh my, it was crazy. Like yes, some type of energy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just crazy, the energy that we would have at one point. So if it was anything, it was that comfort, comfortability and the fact that, yeah, I, I need my child to know who I am. Yeah, <laughs> gotcha. 
So looking back, do you see a kind of like a turning point where things just were kind of going left to the started go, started going left to the point of no return? Like, do you kind of think after the break mm -hmm. that was like that may have been it, or just kind of a point where things just started to go bad and weren't coming back? Like, was there like a specific like event that happened, or just like a time frame, or like yeah, I remember it, like it was a specific day, and I don't remember what the day it was. I just know that. It was wild, but you know, the break in itself should have told me something because we were very much on different pages, but at the same time, like we were so comfortable with the one another. We had built this safe space. Mm -hmm. So neither one of us wanted to let it go, even though we probably should have. We both in the back of our mind knew we should have, but the real turning point was after my daughter was born. Um, back then I didn't understand PTSD. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't understand that. And I'm not gonna say it all was that because sometimes you are who you are. You feel me? We were very young and I'm not holding it against because we co-parent our dynamic now is so amazing. Like right. I've, I'm very grateful that I've chosen to co-parent with this woman and we have a child together. And would I change anything that happened? No, because at the end of the day, like I know now going forward that a lot of who I am now is based off that relationship, yeah. good and bad. But at the mm -hmm. same time, a lot came from it. But it was one day I'm getting, I'm mind you, I'm working two jobs at this time to like, so she wouldn't have to work and you know, make sure the bills are paid, make sure we're, we're accommodating the lifestyle. Taking care of your family. Look, okay. the lifestyle we want to live. So at this time, um, I don't know what happened or what was going on that day, but she just felt it was so comfortable. It was so comfortable for her to just come out her mouth and call me the B word. Oh. Like she just straight like, da 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 And I was like, yo, like when I say it hurt mm. my feelings, like yeah. she just did not give two. So that she said it. She did not. She was just like, I'm sick of the da da. I'm like, like yeah. I'm, I'm trying to go to work like my I, I i i'm tired like i can't clean up like and i know it was about like the house or something like that mm -hmm. but it was so much going on like we have her brother living at the house who doesn't do anything at the time you know he just mm -hmm. you know was going through what he's going through so i'm like why aren't you asking him like why is all this animosity and anger put on me like what is going on why mm -hmm. and she flipped like when once the baby was born she was kind of like a whole nother person mm -hmm. when i say a whole nother being a whole nother being she was very just different, spiteful, mm. angry. Energy was always bad. I couldn't do ish right. And it didn't matter if it was me and somebody else in an argument, she's going for whoever else was on the other side of me. Mm. It was crazy. But yeah, that day where she called me out her name, called me out my name and just was so like nonchalant. Mm. And it was the first, it was, yeah, it was the first time probably. Mm. Like she called me out my name. And I was just like, mm. and when I told her her my feelings and didn't, and so like, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, cool. So mm -hmm. this is where we're at. This is, we're in the thick of it. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, that was that day. Yeah. That was that day. Now, I don't know if that was that day for her or when, when it happened for her, but yeah, that was that day for me. I don't say it's like a common thing, but it is like a, a thing that sometimes couples will kind of try to stamp an engagement or a marriage on a failing relationship to try to make it better <laughs> do you feel like that was the situation you were in or do you feel like it came from a place of genuine I'm attacked. happiness <laughs> like i'm being attacked <laughs> um it's, it's a thing you know yeah, i'm saying is. you you can it tell is. me if that was the case for you i'm not gonna accuse you of anything but, no you know, you know you at like... that time when when i told people that okay i'm gonna propose and they're looking at me like for what like, mm. y'all literally were in a physical altercation the other day. Yeah. Like, what are you proposing for? Yeah. And I'm like, I had this picture in my mind, like, I'm going to have a family and my family is going to be beautiful. And the, what we're portraying, portraying to the outside world, like, I really want that now because now it's not equaling up no more. Mm -hmm. It used to be, oh, this is what you're seeing is real. Like, that's real yeah. love. Now it's like, no, nah, we just put no. Like, I just don't need you in my business. Yeah. You've already created this dynamic. We're going to keep it rolling. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, I don't want to, I never wanted to, have a separate household for my child. Like everything mm -hmm. was based on my child. Every move I made was based on my child mm -hmm. <laughs> at this point. So I was like, you know what? F it. I'm yeah. proposed. Maybe that'll make her happy. Maybe X, Y, Z, da, 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 da. So I bought a ring and Valentine's Day, the whole big shebang in the middle of a restaurant. Yeah. Plate said, happy Valentine's Day. Will you marry me? So and so, so. They delivered it oh, on the like plate. The, it was like the, was the ring in like a glass in a plate. of champagne. No, no, it was, was on the plate. plate. Oh, and when okay. she lifted, she thought it was the oh, dessert. It was the, yeah, it was cute. That is I did oh. good. Yeah. So she was like surprised. Like yeah, no for idea. sure. She had no idea. Okay. Um, 
Oh, you said you had a YouTube channel. Did you do like a couple channel at all? No. no. She was oh, she was on my channel a couple of times, but we didn't do a couple of, you know, channels. Okay, so there's not like an engagement video on no. the YouTube channel. <laughs> on the YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> we were, and, and when we got, all of a sudden, like, that's how I knew things were changing because when we got together, I stopped doing the YouTube videos. Mm. I just really stopped. And somebody brought it to my attention. They were like, that relationship kind of silenced you in a way. You stopped mm. really being yourself. You stopped being so outward because she wasn't as comfortable and I also did things that made her uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, but no, we did not do the YouTube couple yeah. channel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I would do one now, like yeah. at this point. Um, I mean, I probably wouldn't now. I feel like YouTube couples channels have kind of become like the butt of the joke of YouTube a little bit right now just because it's like such a pattern. Like, yeah. Relationship channel. And then there's like a breakup video. And then it's exactly. like we're in separate channels. And then a month later, Somebody says something on Twitter that starts a beef, and then there's a different video in the YouTube channel now that's like, this person did the truth is that this is. <laughs> it's, it's like the amical video, and then yeah, the the nice video, yeah. and then a month later, it's the it's the crap talking video. Oh, I'm like, oh. and then you'll yeah. see like these little reels of oh these people they broke up, like, and yeah. they'll have all these different couples yeah. and all the cute little snippets. I'm like, that is tragic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. I mean, I think that that's probably for the best that y'all didn't do that also because that would have added more pressure to for me, stay yeah, together. Yeah, because, listen, <laughs> keeping up with the Joneses, this man. Yeah, because yeah, that's the thing that I feel like YouTube couples also do that. It's like, they'll have like a, like, they'll have like a breakup video and then it's like the video they posted two weeks before that. They was like in Guatemala, living it up on vacation, like having a great time. And I'm not saying that's not true, truth, video. but it's like... <laughs> Share all of your truth. Like you're saying parts of it. And it's up at the end of the day. It's your channel. Share what you want to share. But you want. You definitely was but, yeah. living it up the and, week before. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all was vacationing. <laughs> but you know, I'm not here to judge. At all. Here to talk at about all. It. <laughs> at all. I am not. Um, okay. So were there any attempts to uh like reconcile or get back together after the breakup? The final breakup? Yeah, like so. The, there was the break, and then you had your daughter, and got back together, <laughs> and, and, and after engagement, that. and then the and you had the engagement, and then the breakup. Yeah, so after that, no, nah, the there was so no was type just... of like we were when we broke up. It was like I just left the house. Like I found out some stuff that was going on, and I was like, okay, either I'm going to continue to deal with ish like this every day, or I'm going to get the f on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I was like, you know what? Let me get the F on. Like, yeah. let me just go. And I left the house. I was very upset. You feel me? I left the house, took my bag, you just packed your stuff up. One thing, like a real Virgo, out. real yeah. Virgo vibes right here. <laughs> packed that one bag and I was out. When I say everything in that house, even though we were a couple, like majority of that stuff, you know, either way, I left all my stuff in the mm. house. Whatever was my, it was there. All I took yeah. was a bag of clothes and I left. So um uh did you go, did you go to your, at your mom's friend's house? house? Oh, yeah. Nah, my best friend. Uh, I went to my best friend's house and was on her couch. And uh, I just was like, I can't do this. Like, I can't. And then she pulled up one day and we had a conversation and she just was sincere and was just like, you know what? I really don't know what's wrong with me. Like, I really don't know where I'm at. I don't know why, you know, I'm doing the things I'm doing. I really don't, I, I'm lost and I'm scared. And I'm like, mm, okay, well, understandable. I, I feel you. Yeah. And it was a very like heartfelt conversation after that conversation was like, well, let's just see where we go from here. Basically putting like, oh, it's like a break, but it's not at the same time. And I was like, I'm going to let you handle your stuff. Over yeah. There. I'm going to handle my stuff over here mm -hmm. and then we'll see what, what happens. happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we see turned into something totally different. Like, when, so no, we did not get back yeah. together. Yeah, that whole situation after that, it got really bad. Mm -hmm. And then it got good. Okay. Yeah. 